Hello and welcome back to ZoneMinder TV. Today we're going to uh, show how to uh, add additional storage to, both to a Linux system and to ZoneMinder in particular. There was a request uh, to make this a little clear and it's something that people stumble over quite a bit. Uh, so, this is a VM and I've attached uh, a virtual disk, but if you've installed uh, you know, a blank drive that you just got from Amazon or whatever, uh, if we take a look at the devices lists, um, you can see my root is is on SDA one or, or three or something. Anyway, that's the the system drive, and SDB will be the I don't know maybe it's a spinning Rust many terabyte drive that you want to store your video on, but it's blank. It has no partitions, nothing on it. Maybe sometimes the disk would come with a I don't know a Windows file system on it or something, or maybe you're just repurposing an old disk. In any event, the first thing to do, this one is blank, the first thing to do is to partition it. Uh, so one way, there are multiple different programs you can use uh, for partitioning a disk. Uh, this is probably the most simple uh, command line version. There's nothing on it. Uh, so we create new primary and I'm just doing all the defaults um, so that it fills the drive. If you want to do something else, I'm sorry that's beyond the scope of this uh, video. Uh, this drive has actually been used before, so it actually has a file system on it, but um, so it might not ask you this question. There it is. Write it out. Now we need to put a file system on it. So to, we're going to use the second extended. notice over in the corner here it just popped up. Um, so the next thing we need to do, and there are lots of different ways to do this, I'm going to go the old school way, how do we tell the system to mount this, uh, you know, make it part of the file system at, at boot up. Um, so we could reference this using devsdb1. The problem is if you plug other drives in, these may get relabeled, it might end up being sdc1 or d1 or something else. Um, so it's not a totally reliable way of addressing the drive. Um, there are other ways you could, we could have given this a label uh, when we made the file system. Um, the problem there is, you again, a second drive might have the same label. It can be very confusing. I think the best way to do it is to use the UUID. And so what we can do, and as you can see, uh, you know nowadays everyone has, has moved you know, by default to addressing drives by the UUID, because it's unique. And we need a place to put it. I like to put things there, slash media, slash video, you can put them anywhere you want. It's the fourth extended file system. And for the next thing, for performance reasons, uh, we like to set these two options. What it means is that basically whenever you read a file, it updates the file system saying you accessed it, but no one cares about that. Um, so we disable those. Uh, another option that I like to add is no fail. This tells, without this, if there was a problem with the drive, it was missing or corrupt, systemd would stop and like wait for you to, you know, take over and, and fix it. And I like the system just come up so I because most of my systems are remote and I want to be able to SSH into them and that sort of thing. So I put no fail so it just continues to boot. And that's good. So that is now mounted at this media source video. Now, if the next thing to keep things simple, we, we could store the zone minder events directly in there, but I like to stick them within our own directory because it simplifies the permissions a little bit. So I'm going to go like that. And in Ubuntu, uh, the zone minder processes run as WW data. So WWData needs to own this 
this directory. Okay. So now here we can go over to our freshly installed zone minder. And these instructions will work both for 1.36 um, and 1.37. I think even back it's the 1.34. Not much has changed around in this part. So here's our storage areas section. So we're going to click add new storage. Call it whatever you like. The path um, you can change. That var cache is what it defaults to in Ubuntu. But obviously we have put it here. The URL would be for if you are using a, some form of remote file system like Amazon S3. So you don't need to worry about that. The server is for if you were in a multi-server environment. The drive is if the drive is physically located in a server far away. Maybe you you know you can tell Zoominder which you know physical machine has which drives, and that helps Zoominder optimize its access a little bit. But for most people, you won't have to worry about that. The type is local. You see, we could have chosen Amazon S3, but this is a local drive. The scheme in the olden days uh, we used to store the deep scheme and that's a file system directory structure where it would go the monitor ID, year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds, and then the event directory. And like that's just too many directories deep and it's completely unnecessary. But if that's what you want, it's still available. Medium is something I developed to be sort of in between. Shallow just puts every event directory all in one directory and it falls apart when there are, you know, lots of events. So you don't want shallow. Uh, medium works best for most file systems. And that's like the date, uh, sorry, monitor ID, the date, and then the event directory. So you only have to go down like two levels to navigate to get there. Um, do deletes. So the Amazon S3 and maybe some other file systems, they use some other mechanism to do deleting more optimally. So you may want to turn that off. And so what it would do, it would just delete the database record and let the files stay there until something else takes care of them. Uh, maybe even ZM audit for that matter. Um, and then enabled is just so that you can, you know, remove this from the UI without actually, you know, deleting it. Um, you know, so we don't want that to be enabled. Most people will just use those basic settings. As you see, it already appeared. It, you can see how much space it is. This is a pretty small little disk I made. How many events are using how much space. So the next thing we need to do is actually assign the monitor to the storage area. And all we do is go into the monitor. Now in 1.36, uh, I believe the storage area is on the general tab. I have moved it in over here to make this recording tab at 1.37. Otherwise, it's the same. You just select it, click Save, and now events will be stored um, on that new drive. And that's it. Uh, the next thing that we have to worry about, though, is um, the purge when full filter. If, if you're relying on this to, to keep the drive from filling up, um, this default one, it doesn't know which drive to look at. So it only is going to work on the root drive, the default. So we need to, basically, we're going to copy this, make another one and specify our new drive so that it knows which drive to look at. So I'm going to just add another rule. Storage area equal to video. Um, and I'm just going to rename this on video. And then I'm going to click Save As, which will copy the existing filter and make a new one. So the old one will still be around. But now we'll have this new one that also checks the video. And that should be it. Let's just go and see, make sure that it's actually creating events. Yep. There you go. It is currently recording that drive. And that is all there is to it. Now, you may want to set up other things like uh, monitoring of how full it is, but I think that's beyond the scope of this video. I like to do keep these short and sweet. Uh, so if you like that and you haven't yet, please subscribe. And uh, we can always use more donations. So if you'd like to become a patron or uh, support us either through Open Collective or Bounty Source or straight PayPal or whatever you want to do, please do so. Uh, I do make other content that gets a little more in-depth um, that I only release to supporting members. Uh, so think about that. We could use your 
assistance to keep video surveillance free and awesome.